In this video, I'd like to discuss labiaplasty and the myth of normal. Now, what is labiaplasty? Labia references the, the vulva and its characteristic skin folds, which are conventionally called the labia minor and major. Now, the labia major are located on the outside and the labia minor on the inside from the external presentation of the vulva. I don't like those words that much. Why don't I like those words? Because humans are very variable in the presentation of their pars intima. And the vulva is the pars intima that is characteristically formed by inner and outer skin folds. Now, the size of those skin folds is very variable. So for some people, the inner labia or the inner skin folds of the vulva are relatively diminutive as compared to the outer skin folds. And in other people, those inner skin folds are actually quite prominent relative to the outer skin folds. Now, if you're using the words major and minor and your minor labia are actually very prominent or major, it gives you the impression that something's wrong. Nothing is wrong. Sometimes the inner labia are, are blossoming like a flower. Now, we don't expect all flowers to look alike, do we? We don't expect a tulip to look like a rose or a rose to look like a begonia. So why would we, we expect all vulva to look alike or all labia to look alike? No, they come in extraordinary variety, just as do faces and hands and body shapes and livers for that matter. So when I offer the language of labia outer and inner, the inner labia and outer labia, it's to correct kind of a value judgment placed on the vulva relative to the relative sizes of the tissue folds. If we were aware that there are inner and outer labia, which are of glorious, different, various shapes and sizes, then we might not judge ourselves or another person if their labia don't match this sort of preconceived major minor uh, categorization of the tissues of the vulva. And the impact of that in our current culture is that people are so self-conscious that a great degree of cosmetic labioplasty are being performed and not without risk. A properly informed consent to labioplasty would include information about the incredible, beautiful variation of the human vulva. It's been demonstrated that when a person is informed of this variability in the shape of the vulva, about a quarter of, a quarter of the people who were inquiring will stop inquiring and will come to an acceptance of their beautiful gift, their own physical endowment and might be happier with themselves knowing that they're part of a continuum of labia shapes and sizes. So in the event that you haven't been informed as to this variety, I'm here to tell you as an anatomist who's worked with hundreds and hundreds of forms that the human creature presents itself in glorious variety, just as do plants that your inner and outer labia will have different shape configurations depending upon your personal endowment. And I do understand that labiaplasty can also be conducted for medically necessary conditions, etc. There can be injuries to the vulva that require surgeries, and we welcome the skills of cosmetic surgeons who can bring their, their uh, talent to bear on the injured and the suffering. So I don't mean to 
uh, malign the skills and, uh, and talents of plastic surgeons, but only to remind us all that the vulva is an incredibly variable form. Our faces are variable, our vulvas are variable. If we adopt the language of inner and outer, we might be less self-conscious about the different shapes of our own personal uh, endowments. And maybe we can let this language go and save ourselves some suffering, especially in the cases of those who endure botched surgeries. <laughs> These things happen all the time, and we need to be aware of those risks when we're uh, undertaking surgeries for cosmetic reasons, which we might not do so if we were aware of the beautiful variety of the human form. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.